Now, my plan is, of course, to talk about the Gospel of John. And I'd like, and I hope I succeed by the time we're finished, to get you to see this as a, a living experience in the early church. The problem of understanding Jesus, uh, making him a part of a community of believers in terms of his significance for their lives, but also a growing experience of a community of believers that translated their perception of their relation to God into a written document. And uh, it is that understanding, the, the sense in which this comes out of a vital relationship of people with God, of people with other people, indeed more professedly in this gospel, of relationship with other Christians, some of whom they liked and some of whom they disliked intently, people who are reading this gospel and for whom it is written, uh, and their reactions to what this meant in terms of how they lived as a community. This is what makes this gospel exciting to me, because, as you'll see, it reflects on our life as Christians today, with its divisions, its strength, some of its problems. And I'll stress over and over again that this is one gospel, one author's viewpoint. And uh, since, inevitably, he is hoping, and I think with some reality, that his readers share his viewpoint, it's one community's viewpoint. And this will cause us to ask the question sometimes, well, how totally valid is that viewpoint? And it's my contention that the viewpoint of no single author of the scriptures is ever totally valid because they come to us only as part of a Bible. And they are not biblical taken in themselves. They are biblical taken as part of a larger collection. Uh, in a sense, I, I always am somewhat perplexed. I don't know whether you have the same phenomenon on the British scene as we have on the American scene, but there are a very strong fundamentalist preachers who are constantly over radio and television, and they're always sort of acting as if each author of Scripture constitutes the Bible in himself, and not recognizing that the very recognition that you had to put these authors in a collection means that they're not Bible in themselves. Their Bible is part of a larger group, and their force comes at times in the recognition of their difference from other authors, and that the Christian picture is one of tension at times uh, among uh, different writers. And we'll see that very strongly in the strengths and, I think, weaknesses at times of John's Gospel. It's a brilliant uh, Christian insight, but it's also one of those um, that is the most fragile in its perception of Christianity. I think it has always supplied um, enthusiasts of uh, both their inspiration and the means of their self-destruction. And uh, it's, no, it's not even a guess that this happened, because we have, in relation to John's Gospel, a set of epistles. And if you read the first epistle of John, you'll find that already it's a community that has torn itself apart. The author of the first epistle is all upset because people have left the community and have not listened to his understanding of the gospel 